probably lead fairly well into what I, I want to talk about. Um, I'm going to take a slightly different angle in some ways. Um, could I get an idea who's worked in clean tech? Or has an idea, you know, has a very good picture in their mind of what clean tech is? Does everyone know it really clearly what it is, all the different areas of it, and what, what encompasses clean tech? Basically what I want to talk about is the kind of journey that led me to be stood here. So, I'll ask you a question, why are you all sat here? What's the fundamental reason for sitting here? Because trying to define what clean tech is, sometimes quite an interesting uh, topic, and particularly when you're talking to investors. So, when I finished doing my undergraduate degree, um, and towards the end of it, I spent a lot of time researching um, you know, all the reasons that people are trying to do stuff in clean tech. So, all the difficulties everyone's been having with uh, getting their head around the fact that we've created a, an economic system where all the environmental externalities are left out of it. So we have, a, we have a, a transaction, we'd have to pay all the consequences. Now, obviously we keep having, as has been mentioned, all these different uh, lovely summits where we try to arrange to bring these back into the uh, economic system. It's not happening anywhere near faster. So as in finishing undergraduate, I was thinking, right now, how do I how do I do something about this? Do I you know sign on to an environmentalist movement? Do I you know push forward in that way? It doesn't seem to have been working that well since the 60s. Hopefully, we, hopefully it will have some impact and it will continue to do so. I mean, I guess in my mind the biggest issue was that um, you know there's been revolutions. People have tried to create revolutions. You know, you've got Gandhian revolution. You know, people were persecuted in India, so everyone you know, took, took inspiration but everyone up, up rose. Now the issue with climate change is the fact that not everyone feels persecuted, not everyone can feel that like every single day. So while you can have some inspirational people, it doesn't necessarily happen. So I'm trying to think, you know, how do I, how do I actually have some impact? Where's the power in the world? Well, the power's with business. So, Looking at all the companies that are out there, a lot of companies are now trying to do CSR more and more, and that's you know it's a very uh, powerful thing in some ways. But at the end of the day, it's usually in addition to the central core of the business. So it can work very well in terms of branding, and it can you know hopefully progress on to be this is how you make money. But unless what you do every day is something inherently good, it's only ever going to be an addition to what you do. At least that's the way I see it. So that might be cynical. It's very good for getting young, idealistic minds to come work for your company, but you know when you actually start to dig into the details of how much do you spend uh, on advocacy for climate change and how much you spend on advocacy against the regulations for climate change, um, usually the negative one outweighs the positive one, which is not you know the way it's always portrayed in the media. So I'm thinking, right, okay, so how can I you know actually physically, tangibly you know, create some change? Okay, so this is clean tech, you know, people are doing wind turbines, all this kind of stuff. Um, what's clean tech? Right, so how do, I, how do I actually find out what clean tech is? Um, you know, what companies could I work for? How, how people graduate get into clean tech? You know, who's, who's set up a company? Who's the young entrepreneur that set up a company that I could speak to and ask, how did you do that? Now, clean tech challenge is a great thing to be involved in for finding that sort of stuff out. Um, this was a number of years ago when Clean Tech Challenge was just getting going. So I started to look around, is there anyone else that's doing anything? Not that many people. Yeah. Started to think of different ways of actually finding this out. Now one of the best things is what you guys are doing here, going to events trying to talk to people. When you actually go to a lot of industry events, and things are changing over the last few years, you often found, and I did many, many a time, going to an event, nice energy event, 95% of the people are 50 year old men with white hair talking to each other. They all know each other, they've known each other 30 years. So, so this is great. It's not really good enough though, is it? Because you know, people that always change the world tend to be the younger generation coming through. They're not the ones in the position of power and they do end up realising the change. So I go to what like the Gandhi example you gave me. I'm not going to say everything aligns, you know. No, no. Um, so, 
met a guy called George at one of these events and we were like, you know, we need to do something about this, so Sarah, and started to form an idea around bringing young people together in a, in a place where they could you know, learn from each other and meet people that have already gone through the process of either setting up their own companies or moving forward to the point that, you know, how do I actually break into cleantech? Um, ended up talking to some guys over in the US, brought their idea over here, the Green Light District, and for a year and a half we hold different events, get young, interesting entrepreneurs down, give a talk about what they're doing, how they've gone about it, advice, what you can do. One of them, well, several of them have been uh, previous uh, winners of uh, Clean Tech Challenge. Um, it, it's been a fantastic thing and it's you know, stirred off a lot of people. I know at least one of them is over in uh, the valley at the moment, uh, talking to investors. And that's only two years after they finished doing this. Um, I guess what I'm trying to explain is you, there's so many different ways you can go about trying to have a career in a different area. And there's a kind of moral to it. Um, you know, people have been environmentalists and there's an ideal behind being in clean tech. Now you can say it's energy, you can say it's water, you can say it's all what you want. But it's really a choice about what you want to do every day with your life. Now, We've just been outlined that sustainability and financial sustainability is basically the ultimate thing because it's the way that the biggest impact happens. If something doesn't generate enough money to pay for itself, then it's never going to have the largest impact. So the choice is, I hope all of you go on to set up your own company, but as a career choice, to work every day in something that will generate enough money to have a big impact and you know, have a good life but actually does something good every day is a brilliant thing to be able to wake up because working in clean tech can be very difficult but it is the future and it's a great thing to be involved in. At the Green Light District we will be holding more events and hopefully some of them co-hosted with uh, the Clean Tech Challenge. We will, we will be as much as possible bringing in people that have you know, got five, ten years experience in the uh, industry, whatever section of clean tech that is so that as you guys are going through the process of setting up and formulating these ideas, we can try and fire different ideas off. And there is mentoring within the um, program, but it, it's a very powerful thing to be able to ask people, just ask informally questions about you know, how do I get in this different route? How could I do this? You know, what is it? Um, and I guess you know, through setting up the Green Light District, I ended up meeting people at events like this, at events I was holding. Um, and got involved with Sustainable Ventures. Sustainable Ventures, um, we have a number of companies, we, we get ideas together, we pull them together, we bring in funding, we build a team, and we have different ones in electric vehicles, domestic energy efficiency, and a number of other ones in the pipeline. And through that, we will have increasing numbers of opportunities to or give out advice, but also opportunities to gain experience along any of your careers. So anyone that's interested in that, please do contact us. And anyone in general that's interested in being involved more with the Green Light District and gaining the benefits from that, again, please, please uh, don't hesitate to get in touch. And if anyone got any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. And I hope you kind of had a little think about why you're sat here and what you want to do with the rest of your career.